Henshin Inspection presents Going Ultra! This is MJ. I'm an author, I'm an artist, I'm an analyzer. Find all my work at mjmunoz.com. Welcome to Going Ultra. Visit mjmunoz.com slash gu for notes and links, and don't forget to subscribe, like, share, and comment to help me grow. Ultraman Z, Episode 16, The Lion's Cry, originally aired October 20th, No, October 10th, 2020. The writer is Takao uh, uh, Nakano, and the director is uh, Tomonobu Koshi. I uh, would be remiss if I didn't include the fact that I'm entitling this analysis Keep Analyzing, and I'll explain why. This is episode 25 of Going Ultra. Starting off with the ultra bad. Yuka was a little grating, if I'm being honest. That's about the worst I could say about the episode. Uh, I liked so much of it, but... Man, the <laughs> like when she's geeking out about stuff, uh, it's a little cringeworthy. Uh, maybe that's because it's a little relatable. Uh, but it, it uh, 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 the performance is, you know, she's the lady's committing to it, but it's just uh, it's a little much. It's a little much. So anyway, moving on to the ultra cool stuff. The new lineup at the end of the AOP is fun to see. I've been waiting, like, hey, when's King Joe going to come in? When's this new form going to come in? And then, boom, here they are. And I'm glad to see that Sevenger is off to the side. I know Sevenger's supposed to be at, like, a museum or something uh, on display, but uh, I really hope we get to see Sevenger come back because, uh, you know, Sevenger's the one that started it all, right? Anyway, moving on. The shell instrument um, soothing Horoboros is cool. It's a cool, classic idea. I really like it. It makes sense in the context. You know, how would you have dealt with this gigantic creature before you would need something like that uh you know was it contrivance that she found it you know next to a tree Uh, whatever i don't care (laughs) i I like it It, it's every 333 years you got to think uh you know over that time span someone's kid someone's punk kid would say like i don't believe in this this is your you know crazy tradition it's stupid i'm throwing this away and then oh and then my grandchildren are dead thanks uh thanks to me being a fool anyway uh gamma futures plasma cape or whatever that was is fabulous i absolutely loved how he used that both to like uh, deflect a hit and then also to attack and uh that was super cool i'd love to see more of that i know i've complained about gamma future being too much like an earthly magician but (laughs) i don't care (laughs) the plasma cape is cool so he can have the plasma cape if he gets rid of maybe the card stuff but like not all magicians wear capes it's a very traditional you know, very, very old type thing, but I think that was just what fancy men wore. Not necessarily magicians, but, you know, magicians were dressed as dandies. They were fancy men. So, I I, I don't know. I, I, I like it. I buy it. Uh, I don't know if Tuxedo Mask ever got a cape attack, but he should have had one. He had a lot of cape flourishing, which I appreciated Gamma Future doing in this episode. So, so there's that. Uh, by the way, the uh, writer of this episode, I wanted, I kept wanting to say Naoka Takeuchi, or Takeuchi, so that's a little bit why I stumbled on it. Anyway. Uh, the new Magic Circle shield that Gamma Future had was really cool, too. Did they just start uh, <laughs> with something generic? Because uh, he just says, like, that rectangular thing that I think regular Z had, too, and then decide to upgrade it um, at some point <laughs> uh, for, like, toy sales? I- I'm a little confused by that, because... Uh, this Z shield that he had, um, it had, well, this Z shield, it had a Z on it. So you can tell, you know, which of your figures it belongs to. And, uh, I just, I just kind of wonder what the motivation behind that was. Cause I would imagine it might have been for toy sales. (laughs) And they said, wait a minute, why are we not, you know, including a cool shield? And it's like, kind of like a magic circle type thing. Anyway, it's very cool. So I dig that, that energy magic, you know, gamma future shield he has. Moving on to the ultra good. The shell instrument soothing horbos was so cool. Um, the tune to it was neat. The whole conceit that like her great grandmother was humming the tune, and that uh, Yuka was able to figure that those were like music notes or like a sheet music arrangement or whatever for the uh, for the shell for the conch or whatever. That was super cool. Um, it's just such a neat idea. I really like it. Uh, so and it was a lot of fun and. Uh, it was neat that she like 3D scanned it and then was able to synthesize the sound of it in her um, in her tablet or whatever. That was a really cool thing to see too. It's nice to see um, like she didn't hack. She couldn't hack, uh, you know, Horoboros or whatever. Um, and she couldn't hack the seashell, but she could, uh, you know, extrapolate through analyzing it, what the shape of it was, what sounds it should make, all that stuff. 
and uh, she was able to duplicate it. So uh, this is just a really neat feat of, uh, of science or, or uh, of technology, I guess you could say. Feat of engineering, perhaps? Anyway, uh, Celebro uh, coming in to mess everything up was a good twist. Uh, I really liked that. I was surprised at what... Um, I was surprised, you know, we saw him at the beginning of the episode. I didn't quite know how he would tie in. And then all of a sudden he just comes and he's furious. I really like the, the camera work on him. Uh, they were focused on like one side of his face and one of his eyes on one side. And then they flipped over to the other where, you know, he's like, you know, mad. Uh, both angry and, you know, the classic form of mad. So, uh, you know, well done stuff there. Uh, Barossa dropping in on Z at the end of the battle is a great way to raise the stakes. I'm nervous. I don't know how he's going to make it through. Although we did see in the, in the, well, if you watched the coming attractions, that's what it's called, the preview for the next episode, you'll see that, uh, you know, my concern for him is well warranted. Um, but I don't want to spoil that here. So anyway, moving on to the ultra deep thinking about this episode, watching it, it made me think, uh, well, and then also, well, anyway, <laughs> I'm just going to read what I have here. Almost everything cuts both ways. To put another way, there is good and bad to almost everything. Yuka is obsessed with kaiju. She wants to learn all about them, and while they are dangerous uh, in the wrong circumstances, something about them fascinates and interests her. She uses that obsession to help people. Celebro is obsessed with the monster medals, per uh, particularly the Belio medal, and doesn't care how many people will be hurt by Horoboros or Metsuboros in his tantrum over Z having... Uh, the metal, the Belial metal. In fact, uh, whatever is driving him to crank out uh, metals and use them is only causing harm to others. That contrast between them, um, Celebro and, and Yuka, uh, seems to make the point that action and consequences are much more important than intention. Yuka could have bad reasons for working with storage, but the lives she has helped save are vastly more important than those reasons. So I think that's, uh, I think that's interesting. And I like how none of that was really spelled out. It's just, they have these two characters, they present them in this particular way or the way they have, and then you have the, them coming together, so to speak, uh, to be contrasted. So I would give this episode a four out of five. I thought it was really good. Uh, diving into Yuka's character was fun. The fact that she became obsessed with a kaiju after a childhood encounter is relatable and fun. Uh, that didn't need to be the case, but I like how it served her character and the overall plot here. Yuka cracking the code in the ancient text uh, and almost saving the day, if not for Celebro, is a heartwarming validation of her desire to keep analyzing the kaiju who resonate with some deep part of her. The fact that she has... Uh, a fascination and affection for kaiju and yet is able to help kill them is complex. What does that represent? Balance, perhaps? Does it represent knowing when to draw lines and having a healthy relationship with something you like? Too much of most things can be bad for you, but beyond that, the inability to let go of something you have lost and move on can be crippling. That is a hard and necessary part of life for a mature adult and is something we all need to be able to do. What do you, so, uh, that's basically my justification for why I like the episode. Um, the fact that she's always willing to learn more and, uh, is, you know, very motivated to keep on analyzing these kaiju and, you know, what their abilities are and what they can do and, you know, how they interact with the planet and things like that is, it's very interesting. And all of that is basically what makes, uh, what makes time travel possible? You know, it makes it, it makes the case, or it sets the ground for this episode to, uh, you know, have executed on all those things, which is interesting. Um, I'm going to close out with a question for you. I'd love uh, for people to answer this in the comments. What do you think of Yuka telling Z to kill Horoboros? Does her loving kaiju and yet helping to kill them work for you? I hadn't really thought of it uh, before this episode. I mean, I realized she was obsessed with kaiju and she liked having, you know, parts of their bodies and, and you know, these artifacts, uh, artifacts and whatever. Um, and she had a collection. And I thought that, you know, on one level that, uh, you know, I understood that. <laughs> but um, after this episode, it has like a whole new context and it seems to be saying uh, something. <laughs> and it made me think like, is this lady, you know, is this crazy to both admire and want to kill? But it kind of made me think of hunters. Oh, it's a beautiful animal and let me kill it. Um, 
obviously hunting for food uh, is different from just trophy hunting. Um, and, you know, if you want to be mad at people who hunt for food and kill animals uh, because they're so cruel, uh, I'd like to point to the Maasai Bushmen uh, who do that for their sustenance and their life. And just, you know, to point out to you that there are uh, acceptable examples of people doing such a thing as, you know, killing an animal to eat its flesh. Besides the fact that you probably uh, have never killed an animal and yet you've eaten the flesh of many, many, many animals. Um, I'm in the same boat, uh, but as I grow and progress, I don't know why I'm going off on this tangent, but as I grow and progress and uh, things in my life change, uh, that's not going to be the case anymore. I'm going to be raising animals uh, on my little homesteading operation. But that's neither here nor there. Um, again, what do you think of Yuka killing or telling Z to kill Hor uh, Horboros? And do does her loving kaiju and yet helping to kill them work for you? I want to hear all the angles, all the sides, all the perspectives. Um, I think it's a great conversation starter. Uh, anyway, that's all for this uh, analysis of Ultraman Z episode 16. I'm going to go ahead and get out of here. I'm going to ask you to go check out mjmunos.com. Type in the search bar Glowbug. You can find Ava and the Glowbug, my manuscript for that, my document, my text for the story of a children's picture book that I'm going to be putting together. And that's all I'm going to say. Please go ahead and check that out. I'd really appreciate that. Uh, like, comment, share, all that stuff. Go check this out on the video version of Odyssey. There are pictures with it, um, images from the episode. And if you like the audio-only version, you can go to mjmunos.com slash gu and find that there. Uh, you can find, I think, I think Going Ultra's on um, iTunes and it's, you know, a few other places as well. Um, there's an RSS feed. Uh, so anyway, go ahead and check that out. With that, uh, I'm going to remind you that you don't have to shout henshin to be a hero. And I'm going to leave you with peace and blessings. This is MJ signing out.